All right, my friends, it's time for another fantastic Revit video. <laughs> fantastic is actually in the eye of the beholder. So you might not think it's so fantastic, but it's okay. All right, a, a, um, a great um, user. He is on his way to becoming a um, Revit guru. And yet he still calls me um, Master Shifu. All right, you know who you are. You're, you're doing great out there. He asked me in um, a comment, he said, hey, I got a question for you. How do you deal with split levels? Like if you've got a split level home or residence that you're dealing with or you're, you're designing, or what about even a commercial building? If you've got a split level and you want the plans to look correctly, how do you deal with that? And so that's where we're going today with today's Revit tip. All right, so here we go, my friends. I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, so here we are. And we're, here we are with Revit. You guys get out there and design something great today, okay? Until you get out there and you, and when, until this video is over, just relax, here we go. All right, so here's our building. And this building is clearly not a split level, but let's just go to the plan and say, okay, let's just suppose here in the plan, we're gonna blow out a wall and build ourselves a split level. There's, there's a lot of things to deal with. And one of the biggest things is levels, but we're gonna get there because that's the most important thing about working with split levels is levels. <laughs> hmm. Go figure, right? But here we go. Some people don't go about it the wrong, the right way, and they don't use best practices. And I'm not saying that's you, but I'm just going to show you what you don't want to do, and then we'll show you what I what I do want you to do. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to click on this wall. And I'm going to say create similar on the keyboard. Okay. Let me just see. Mm -hmm. It's going from the first floor up to the second floor. So if you just start drawing, you're like, la la la, we're gonna come out this way mm -hmm, with our addition, okay? I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna come back. And maybe I should make them line up, align with the keyboard, you go align to here, bam. And then I'm gonna bring this over, okay? So what we've got here, bloop, okay, cleans up. We've got a little room. And in 3D, all it is is a little pop out on the side, la la la, okay? Keep it simple, okay? Um, let's get rid of that um, window right there and let's get ourselves a door. Boop. Okay, we got ourselves a door. Now, when I place that door, let me um, flip it to the other side. Boop. There we go. When I place that door, what it did I am in a view that is set to the first floor. You guys with me? So in this view, I'm going to go over here and look at my properties. And if you scroll down a little bit, under extents, that's just the category we're going to look at, you'll see that the associated level is locked. It's not changeable. It's locked on the first floor. That's because this view was created and told to use the first floor as its associated level. And you're like, how did it do that? So let me show you, here's what happened. Someone, probably me, wanted a floor plan, okay? Of the, the floor and they went, up, I went up here, I'll just say it's me. I'm gonna go to view. And when I click on plan views on the dropdown, it says floor plan. I would like a new floor plan, okay? And when it pops up, I'm going to uncheck this box so I can see all the available levels. And then I would, when you pick first floor and say, okay, it creates a view that is locked. It is fully locked on first floor as the associated level. But if I pick second, it would be associated with that one. Whatever floor level you pick, your view is associated with that. Now here's the key, I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't need another view. I just wanna show you how this one happened. The reason this is important is because every 
thing that you draw goes onto that associated level. You plop in doors and you plop in windows and you plop in furniture and you plop in foundation walls, you stairs, everything that you plop into the plan associates itself with the associated level. And some people go, oh, wait, now they, I'm serious here. Here comes the not the best practice. Well, this is supposed to be dropped down, right? So I'm going to put a, I'm going to, okay, let me just, let me just open up. Um, let me move this section marker out. So we're going to go to this section, okay? Just for a sec, this section here. And we see, oh dear, the walls are associated with and they're on the first floor. Now, some people, well, let's go back to the plan and they pick a wall and they say, oh yeah, these three walls, I'm just going to hold down control and pick all three walls. These walls actually go down three feet lower, okay? Work with me here. And this is what they do. They go, okay, um, these walls, their base constraint is the first floor, but they need to be three feet lower. So I'm gonna put a minus three in front of them, okay? And that seems legit at first, but you, my friend, are going to have to put a minus three feet on everything that goes on in this room, everything. It's a, your brain has got to think about it. Now, let's suppose you didn't have levels and you had a five-story building. Okay, that window needs to be 53 feet above the first floor and you put it in. And wait, the door on the fourth floor needs to be 40 foot above, 40 foot two, whatever. You, you get where I'm going? You can't be doing the calculations for the, uh, the levels all based on first floor. So when you have a split level building, you have got to make a level for that lower level, okay? So that everything can be associated with it. So let me show you, what I'm, let me just do that with you here. Let's go to the section, okay? And there's a couple ways to put in another level, easy peasy. You can pick one of the existing levels and copy it. Copy it down some distance, give it a new name. I'm gonna call it lower level, okay? And it's not supposed to be at five foot six above the floor. I'm gonna change that to minus three feet, okay? Boom, and it shoots down where it belongs. You might notice, okay? that I want you guys to notice that this, all these other ones are blue, blue. These, these two are blue because they have floor plans associated with them, they're blue, okay? But this one that I just copied is, doesn't have a floor plan associated with it, it's black. So I want to have a floor plan associated so that it has this, the associated level is lower level. And if I look over here, I don't have one, okay? If I had, I'm gonna delete that. Well, I'm, I'm, let me do it first. Let me just do it. Here's what I need to do. I need to go to view. I need to go to plan views. I showed you this a minute ago. I need to go, I want a floor plan, click on it. And I want it associated with lower level. And when I say, okay, it associates, this one's called lower level over here. It is associated with that lower level now. The cut plane is four feet down. The view range is set where I need to. Now here, herein lies the problem that people would have with this. Let me go back to the, the plan that we were at, okay? Let's suppose I don't have this plan and I'm gonna put in a window, W in on the keyboard. I pop in a window, okay? Now, when I look over here, oh, the sill height is set at three feet. That's great and all, but look at my section. Wait for it. It's three feet above the first floor because the view I placed it in was the first floor, okay? So let me just delete it. I don't wanna have to go in and say, okay, you are minus three feet. So here we go. Let's go back to the plan. 
We don't want to be in the plan that's associated with the wrong level. I'm going to go to the lower level plan, lower level plan here. And now if I say W in on the keyboard and place my window, take a look. Let's go to this section again. See, it is associated correctly. When I highlight it, it's associated with the lower level. And that goes for everything that I place. So when you're working with split levels, you need to, let me hide my, I'm going to hide my, um, um, what do you call it? Mm, dirt, my topo surface, just so that it's not um, bugging with us right now. <clears throat> so you need to, where was I? Okay, you need to create a level and go to that view whenever you're placing items on that level, okay? So I can say create similar, I'm gonna put a foundation on there. Now on these walls, if I'm in 3D or if I'm in plan, wherever I am, I can pick on these walls, okay? And I don't have to do the math, I'm saying, okay, you, because of frost in the area, you're not three feet down from the first floor. You need to be maybe because of, I'm gonna say, you need to be down a couple of feet from the lower level. So I can, I, don't, I can do the math and it lowers it down for frost reasons in this area, okay? Let's go back to the floor plan. And if I go to put in window, I'm no, I don't wanna be in the plan of the main building. I wanna be in the lower level view when I'm adding doors and windows and floors and whatnot. So I'm gonna put a floor in here. I'm gonna say architectural floor and I'm putting in a six inch concrete slab and you can see, I'm gonna say zero. You are zero inches from the lower level, okay? I'm just gonna pop that, that floor in there. Bam, done. So that when we go to the section, bam, we've got a floor in the right place. So everything I add, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the lower level. When I put in furniture, okay? I'm gonna put a desk in there, create similar, let's put a desk there, right there. And I can get, create similar on that chair. Okay, there. I can go get different items and place them in here and wait for it. They go down to the correct level. When I go to put in stair, I can say, I want three steps from the lower level up to the floor. So everything becomes associated correctly with the lower level because I have a view. Now, you've got to tell your team, whenever placing objects into the lower level, you have to go to a view that has Wait for it, and you just tell them to check the extents down here where it says associated level. Make sure it's associated with the lower level before you place doors and windows and all the other stuff that goes in there. Because I have honestly seen plans, building plans, where people have had to go back because they have additions and the floor plates are off. It could be only six inches, could be eight inches, a foot, two feet, whatever. If your floor plates are not lined up, you need to create a level for that shift and go to a view that's associated to that level in order to place all the walls, windows, doors, equipment, everything that goes in there. Because I, like I said, I have seen them. They had to go back and click on every single door and shift it and go and click on every single window and shift it because someone had just gone clickety, clickety, click and built the whole plan, not thinking about the fact that their view was not associated correctly, just saying. All right, so last thing you need to consider is back in your floor plan, if you wanna see this correctly, I'm gonna go back to the plan. So back in the plan, if you want to be able to see things correctly, because we know there's furniture in there, right? We know that there, it's in there, but I can't see it because it's three foot lower. And I need to go and place a plan region in my normal floor plan that is going out the door that's going to be part of my working drawings. <clears throat> um, 
I created a lower level plan for placement of objects, but I don't necessarily have to put that lower level plan onto a sheet. I can still use the single floor plan view, but I need to create a plan region that shows me it further down. So here's, here we go. You just go to view and you click on plan views, but instead of getting another floor plan, you just come down here to plan region, okay? A plan region is an area on your plan. I'm just gonna, I just put this box around this little area over here. If I just check the box, it is going to use the same cut plane as the view that I'm in, but I can change it. I can click on that um, plan region and you'll see the view range button is available at the top or you can see the view range button is available over in properties, okay? Doesn't matter which one you click on, brings up this dialog box behind your face. <laughs> okay, I don't want this view cutting at the first floor. I want it cutting at, wait for it, the low, I want the cut plane to be four foot off of the lower level. And I want the bottom going all the way to the lower level, okay? So the I'm keeping my eyes up where I am so that I can see everything as I'm supposed to, but I'm changing the cut plane and the bottom to go further down. That doesn't need to go an inch below. I'm just gonna set that at zero. So here we go, wait for it. Okay, bam. So now you can see inside, it looks like it has affected this window because it touched it. So what I need to do is probably edit my boundary. Mm -hmm, don't want to touch that window. I'm going to come out just an inch or two here. And I'm going to trim this. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to touch that window because it affects the view of it. Okay, so take a look. <clears throat> It um, whenever a plan region comes in contact with a touches a window or touches a stair, you gotta be careful not to touch stairs because if it touches it, it kind of draws the view range of that object to whatever the view range is of the plan region. Just giving you that heads up. So once this is done, once you put this plan region in here, you can annotate here. You can put in all of the things that you need to, to um, dimensions here, your tags here. You just annotate it right here in this single floor plan that's planning on going out the door. You don't have to do all your annotation in the associated level for that. I know that that, <clears throat> I hope I covered all the little tiny nuances of working with split levels. And, um, and I think that's all. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will address them. But until next time, happy riveting. You guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. All right, bye-bye.